Thank you, Bell Choir, for that beautiful opening. I would like to welcome all of you this morning. You're hearing my voice and not seeing me. I am behind you. Don't turn around. You're fine. Uh, just wanted to have an opportunity to welcome each of you, and we are grateful for the Bell Choir of playing that beautiful arrangement of All Hell the Power. Thank you for joining us today for Palm Sunday. I am with the children and choir. We will be processing in just a moment. I have a few announcements to share with you. The children's workers have told me I have to talk fast. Um, so today, of course, begins Holy Week. We have services this week, Monday, Thursday at 6 o'clock, and our Good Friday musical presentation at 6 o'clock on Friday. hope you'll come out for both of those. We're excited about those opportunities. Immediately following the service today, there's an Easter egg hunt. We're excited for all the children to be involved and take part in that. We have a special golden egg out there for the adults. If you all want to try and look and see, it has $100. I'm playing. Um, but we, we, are, we do ask you to stay and see the children as they're excited about that. Remember, next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, we'll have a special time of celebration and worship. We also will have the flowering of the cross that we have each year. So bring flowers. I don't know that we're going to have a lot in our yards this year, this early. You may. There's a frost warning so, or freeze warning. It might take out what's there, but please bring some flowers so that we can take part in that tradition here at NBC, of the flowering of the cross on Easter Sunday. Something to keep in mind we are going to have a trial schedule on Sunday mornings in May just to see how it works. We're going to change things around just a little bit, try to provide a little bit of cushion in our timing. Fellowship starting at 9, 9.15, NBCU, the discipleship classes, and worship at 10.30. So please keep that in mind and share it with others. And we're going to look at that in May and see how that works out. So thank you all for coming out today. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to each of you. Good morning. Good morning. So please join with me now in the call to worship and then we will join in singing our processional hymn. The grace, mercy, and peace of Christ Jesus be with you all. The stone which the builders rejected has become the keystone of the corner. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
Thank you, Lord, for friends with glasses. <laughs> I left them at home. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is good, and he has given us light. Bind the festival profession, procession with branches up to the um, horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are, you are my God, I will extol you. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that in your grace we have come to your saving faith in the Lord Jesus, the precious cornerstone on whom our faith is founded. Thank you that Jesus was willing to come to earth and be despised and rejected so that he could become the chief cornerstone and the rock on which we stand. We praise and thank you for your goodness and grace, your kindness, your loyalty, and deliverance in times of trouble. Thank you that in Christ we need not fear those that would oppress and destroy us. How we praise your name that you provide healing in times of trouble, comfort in times of sorrow, light in times of darkness, freedom for those that are enslaved, restoration for all that are brokenhearted, strength in days of weakness, and hope in times of distress. We give thanks unto the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this season of Lent, we reflect on a journey of faith with Christ, remembering that long ago God planted the tree of life, and yet it is on that tree that Christ was crucified. We are again reminded that life comes out of death. We are promised that death does not have the final word. We light this candle this Palm Sunday, the last Sunday of Lent, remembering God's faithfulness through the cross upon which our Lord was crucified that death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for Christ triumphs over death. Let us pray. As the days lengthen, dear God, may we remember that you are the one who calls life out of death and that you are the Lord of our lives. In the name of Christ, may we have the strength 
found in him to journey towards the cross. Amen. Please stand as we continue to worship together. with the sweet 16 this morning? <laughs> yes, yes. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, you are almighty, the creator of all. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us each and every day. And Lord, we ask you to bless these gifts and offerings that we've received this week and this morning, <clears throat> that we use them to grow your kingdom. Lord, we pray that we have the wisdom to be good stewards of your resources. These things we ask in your son's name and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> special, special something happened this morning, what did y'all get to do? You got to wave <laughs> leaves, that's right. These are called palm fronds. And you see, I've got a, a little cross that I'm wearing. It's made out of a, a palm frond. And today is called Palm Sunday. It's when we remember that Jesus Christ entered into a city called Jerusalem, and the people welcomed him. They waved palm fronds, <clears throat> and they said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, now, something kind of neat about palm fronds is that during this time, when they did that, it was showing excitement, 
showing respect, but was also something that was used to weigh for heroes, for special people that had maybe been victorious in battle. It's a lot. Back then, this equated, I've got something in my box today, special for y'all to see. It'd be like us today, see, waving, what's a flag? It's kind of curled up. But say if we were at a parade waving an American flag, that's similar to what the people that were lining the way where Jesus was. Well, they wouldn't call that an American flag, but it would be similar to, it was showing something we call patriotism. And you know, patriotism is not a bad thing. It's good that we are proud to live in the country where we live and for all the wonderful things that happen. And we have the freedom to come together and worship like this. However, Jesus had a different idea. When he was entering in that city, he wasn't coming as a warrior king. In the scripture, it talks about a king of peace. And he was on a little donkey. That is right. Oh, not Carson. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> he was on a little donkey. Instead of a big white horse. Showing what his kingdom was going to be. So it's, it's all right. That's right. Peace. It is good for us to be proud of our nation. We need to realize, however, that Christ came for certain reasons. For salvation. And his desire is to see peace. So we want to think about that. And I am going to give each of you today, I have a little flag for you. Yes. Um, and I, you probably don't want the other stuff that's in here. Um, yeah, the candy, Brooklyn said, yes, it is in there. So you can have some candy as well. But let's have a prayer um, before you go back, okay? Dear Lord, I just thank you for these children. I thank you for their families, and I thank you for our church family. I pray that you will just protect them. You will be watching over us, we know, as we prepare this week. Do remember what Christ did for us, and remember, most importantly, that he conquered death for our sakes. Amen. Okay, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's do this in some order. You, where did, Yeah. Thank you again, Bell Choir and our musicians, Karen and Clyde, for sharing your musical gifts with us. We are now uh, preparing our hearts to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. I would like to take just a moment to share with you some prayer updates and some prayer um, concerns, asking you to please keep these in mind during your prayer time and, of course, we remember them, especially this morning. I ask each week that we um, remember those that are listed in our card ministry to the homebound. 
This week, it's Donald Parker and Edith Skinner. Please remember them in your prayers, and please take a moment, if you would, to send them a card or a note. It, um, it means a great deal, more than you can often realize, for them to know that they're remembered. So we ask you to please uh, keep them in your prayers and, and drop a note of encouragement in the mail for them. Uh, continue to remember, please, Christy Briggs, as she continues to recover following a cancer diagnosis, a procedure, she is doing well and recovering and growing stronger. Um, she has, uh, of course, an extended recovery ahead of her, but please continue to remember her. Um, continue to remember Dexter Denton. We are so glad that he is feeling better and is worshiping with us this morning, so please remember uh, Dexter in your prayers following his surgical procedure uh, a couple of weeks back. Please remember Ms. Pat Parker in your prayers. She underwent a procedure this past week and is um, doing well. She has some follow-up this week, so please keep her in your prayers as they move forward and try to determine uh, what path they need to take. Uh, please remember Irma Bolton in your prayers. She is our financial assistant. She recently had eye surgery, cataract removal, and is doing well um, and recovering, so please continue to remember her. Um, this morning, I, I ask if you would, I uh, had a message from Daddy, that if you please remember uh, both he and Mama in your prayers, they are not feeling well, and I know that they would appreciate our prayers this morning. Um, they have a great deal of, of love for this congregation and appreciate all of you, so please um, you would remember them in your prayers. I want to ask you now to uh, hear from the Word of God, from the book of Philippians, if you would. If you have your Bible with you, please follow along with me as we turn to Philippians, the second chapter, beginning in the fifth verse through the eleventh verse. And this is a passage which it talks to us about imitating Christ and having the same mind as our Savior in what he did for us. So please hear me now as I share with you this passage. And also I would like to remind us uh, we've had several connected to the congregation through family recently passing um, I do ask you to continue to remember the family of James Leggett as they continue to deal with this, their time of loss, and ask you now to hear this passage from the book of Philippians in the second chapter. Beginning in verse 5, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father." During this season of Lent, I call us into a time of confession. It's a time to look within ourselves and to see if there are those things which are keeping us from fully being as close to our Savior and our walk as we should be. So I ask you to take a moment as I share this call and invitation to confession to search your hearts and prepare as we will share the pastoral prayer. Where do we hide our palm branches when the parade is over? When do our hosannas become cries for punishment? Like those before us, how do we turn our backs on the one who comes to us in the name of the Lord, the one who humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross? As we begin Holy Week, let us admit what is true about ourselves as we approach the Lord in prayer. Please join me in prayer. Through the shouts and branches, the Savior rides again into our hearts, our Jerusalems, the places that we have fortified and we've built up, trying to protect ourselves, we think, and we're even 
holding out sometimes against God's truth and love. We know that, that you're a patient God, dear Lord, and we pray that you'd be with us today as, as we once again witness the entry of Jesus into the holy city. Remind us that our holy cities, our souls, need to welcome Jesus in celebration and commitment to his witness to us. We can easily get caught up in the noise and forget the Savior. We can get so focused on the celebration and the colors that we look past the solitary figure that was seated upon a small donkey. We stand at the gates this day to welcome Jesus. May our welcome of Jesus also be reflected in our welcome of others who come into our midst, free us from judgment and prejudice so that we may be open to hearing your word through the ministry of Jesus and the disciples. And as we have spoken names this morning of those that are near and, and dear to us who, who need your healing love, dear God, help us to remember that we also need a good measure of your grace and mercy. Bring us through this parade into the comfort of your love. Walk with us to the cross. Stop us from running and hiding, from siding with the enemy because we are too afraid to speak the truth of your love. Help us to look up at the figure on the cross, remembering how Jesus was faithful to the end of his earthly life. Cause us to be steadfast in all that we do. Then we can truly shout with the others in the parade, Hosanna, blessed is Jesus, blessed is he who has come and continues to come into our lives forever. Amen.
Thank you, Blaine and Bell Choir. I have to call them by the name they say they wish to be called, the Dingalings. Um, but that uh, was such a beautiful arrangement of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, appropriate for this time, and had almost an otherworldly sound to it, and I am grateful for them sharing that with us this morning. As we are here on this Palm Sunday, and it's hard to believe that it's the final Sunday in Lent, and that next Sunday is Easter, we, of course, have to get through this week, Holy Week, and prepare ourselves Remembering Christ at the Last Supper, remembering Christ upon the cross, remembering Christ in the grave, and then, of course, thank goodness, celebrating his resurrection next Sunday. Today, as I bring you another installment in talking about bookshelf wealth, as I have mentioned it over the past several weeks, and it's just a, an interior interior design uh, thought that's nothing new, but it talks about using bookcases, bookshelves, as I have one in the sanctuary, to display things other than books, to display things that are important to you, things that have meaning to you, and I'm asking us during this time, as we move toward the cross and toward Easter, that we also think about things that we would have on there that are meaningful to us if we were to look at a bookshelf representing our lives, but also what are some things that are on there that are getting in the way of our relationship with Christ. And so today, as I share with you about a familiar, familiar story, a familiar narrative from Scripture, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I want us to think about Christ and the meaning of, of that symbolic act. Long ago, that led him eventually to the cross. And I want to share with you from the book of John in the 12th chapter, verses... 12 through 16, please follow along with me in your Bibles or follow along as you read on the screen where we hear these words. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. I had to read this article when I read the tagline. It stated, scientists share the best locations to view UFOs in the United States. When I saw that, I said, I've got to read this. I've got to see what in the world they are talking about. And when it said scientists, it didn't say, you know, UFO hunters or Whatever we may think of those people who chase UFOs might be, but scientists. And their recommendation is simply this. If you want to find the best place to spot UFOs, you need to head west in the western United States. Out past New Mexico, Arizona, out into the areas like that, because... They're wide open. There's not as much distraction. But now, it's, they're not called UFOs. They are UAPs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. It's just a fancier name. Well, in this article, there was a map that showed the hotspots where you're supposed to be able to best see 
these UFO, UAPs, QDRs, whatever they are, and it showed, of course, the western part of the U.S., but guess what? Edgecombe County was highlighted. I looked, Nash County wasn't, but at Edgecombe and a little bit around it had a slight variation in color. Now, the hot spots were red, and the least hot spot, I mean, way down there is gray. Edgecombe County was gray. But guess where some red was on the east coast? If you're down from my neck of the woods, you'd say O'Ree County and Georgetown County. O'Ree County is where Myrtle Beach is located. And I'm thinking, yeah, people probably see a lot of things there. And they think they're seeing things. But it was pretty blank until you got out to the west. And this is becoming a bit more serious. And I thought, wow, what a wonderful way to spend our tax dollars. Because in 2022, the Deputy Secretary of Defense and the Director of National Intelligence helped to establish the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, where they officially study this information. They seek to gather information, and they try to follow up. It was created to lead and synchronize a whole government approach to the issue, it stated, by Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick from the University of Georgia, a physics professor who is the first director of the organization. And he says, in our modern world, with all of the sensors we have and all of the technology, unknowns are unacceptable. So that there should be nothing that is unidentified. So, I thought, wow, that's interesting. The best spots to, to see these phenomena. And aren't we always interested in getting the best seats? If you're going to a concert, if you're going to a game, Baptists are the only ones usually that want to sit in the back. And that's in church, and not anywhere else. But at, at most events, or things such as that, we, we want to try and find good seats. And what, are the, what do we talk about? You know, how can we describe seats sometimes? We say, if you're in the nosebleed section, what is that? You're so far up in the rafters that the altitude is going to give you a nosebleed. Or if some of you will remember, and I will not go fully into the, the commercial, but Bob Euchre, who was a famous tele, television sportscaster, but he also played baseball, and there's a commercial where he's sitting down in some really good seats at the stadium, and the usher comes down and, and says, sir, you're in the wrong seats. And he gets up and he says, oh, I must be in the front row. And then it shows him way up in the, in the rafters where you can hardly see him. And everybody started referring to, for, referring to them as Bob Euchre seats. If you've heard that, that means you've got bad, bad seats. And we know where the best seats are. We know what it means to have those good seats. Other people are looking at you and they're jealous. They're wanting to be where you are. Today, we somewhat can look at that and think about that. There were those who wanted the best seats to spot Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. As he made his triumphant entry into this holy city, the crowds, as we are told, they waved palm fronds, they shouted Hosanna, which means save us. Because they were looking to Christ to be their Savior, to be the Messiah that they had waited for so long to come in and to, to make everything right. Yet Christ, as we're told, the people prepare, they have palm branches, they went out to meet him shouting Hosanna, wanting to be able to get the best spots that they could see him. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King, this is the key, the King of Israel. Now, in this passage, we have several quotes from the Old Testament. Of course, blessed is the one who comes is drawn from the Psalter reading that we had today, Psalm 118. There's also a reference to the statement that he would be writing a small colt or small donkey that comes from Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verse 9. And these are considered, of course, to be fulfillments 
of prophecy showing who Jesus was. Yet, the people wanted a king. Christ had somewhat tried to move against this thought previously. Yet, he somewhat accepted it now, but he accepted it on his terms. Because coming into the city, riding on the colt of a donkey or a small donkey, showed that he was going to be the king of peace, not the king of conquering, not the warrior king that would come in on a great stallion and change everything in the manner that they, the people, wanted it to happen, how they wanted to see it happen. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Daughter of Zion is a reference to Jerusalem. The do not be afraid is a little different than the statement from Zechariah. It's felt that it comes from either a place in Isaiah or the book of Zephaniah. But telling people to not be afraid, Jerusalem, for your king is coming. But there's a little bit of a difference there. He's sitting on a donkey's colt. And we've got his dear old disciples, as always. They just kind of don't seem to quite fully grasp but when he is glorified, and what is that? When we think of being glorified, what do we think of? We think of great and wonderful things. When Christ was glorified, it was a great and wonderful thing. When he was glorified is when he was placed on the cross and he was lifted up. Now, for us, we go, that ain't being glorified. That, that's being tortured. No, that was Christ in his greatest glory leading up to the great event of the resurrection. And it states that the disciples suddenly became clear when they saw this. That it affirmed and clarified everything for them. Yet, I think we have, we have some issues ourselves that we need to think about. And there's, there's a song, it's an old spiritual I want to share with you. It's entitled, Right On King Jesus. And... I think sometimes we, we want Jesus, of course, to think of him riding on into Jerusalem. But I think we also look at it in a different way. Listen for just a moment, and then I'm going to share and close out. idea from that song right on king jesus right on in majesty he's the king of king the lord of lords there is none like him but how do we look at that and how do we think about that i believe that we might sometimes sing that right on king jesus and i think we're saying right on right on out of town because i don't want to have to do what you want me to do don't stop as you're coming by because you might expect something of me. Don't look my way. We don't want the good seats then because you're going to be right in the line of view. And when we realize what it is that Christ came to do and came with the expectations for his people, 
You know, we, we, we probably change our tune right quickly. And I want to ask you today, as you hopefully have searched or searching your heart, searching your life, and looking to King Jesus, do you truly open your heart and seek to be guided and led by him and maybe even more importantly by the Holy Spirit allow it to speak to you? And it's interesting how the Lord can do certain things. God moves in mysterious ways and he kind of moved in my life this week on Friday I had several things to do I had to come run run out to the office and and take care of a few things Friday is usually supposed to be I call it my day out of the office and it depends what needs to be done, what I try to get done. And so I ran to the office, and then I was going to try and work in the yard and beat the rain. And most of you are aware that I, I love roses, and so I have some roses. I needed to fertilize my roses, and I have some roses to replace some that didn't make it and to fill in a couple of spots. And so I needed fertilizer for my roses, and I needed bananas because if you plant roses, you put a banana in the hole. If you didn't know that, you know now. It helps the root growth. makes a beautiful, beautiful bush. My wife, Shelly, learned that one day standing in line at Lowe's. And ever since, we have done that. And I can tell a major difference in the rose bushes that we've planted. That we've put those bananas in the hole. It sounds weird. So I was going to run to Walmart. I'm going to run in and run out. Yeah, I see y'all laughing. Because you get in there, and not only is there the danger of seeing all these things you want to look at, but then other things happen. And I went in with the determination that I was going to go straight to the garden section, and I was going to go straight to the produce section, and I was going to go straight to the cash register, and then I was going to go home. So I walked in with my determination, turned left, went straight down to the garden section, found the rose fertilizer and had to sit there and analyze it for a long time, figuring out, okay, how many bags do I need? Is this exactly what I'm going to get? Oh, this looks nice. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. And then something happened. I glimpsed left, and they had gotten in a new shipment of orchids. So I had to step over and look at them because I like to keep some flowers in my office. And orchids, if you get them when they're fresh, those flowers will last forever. So I went over there, and I said, oh, yeah, I found several. Put them in my buggy, and it didn't happen that quickly. I sat there. I picked them up, set it on the counter, then set the other one beside it on the counter. I compared, how many blooms does this one have? How many blooms does it have that's going to open? What, what colors do I need? So I put some in the buggy, and I was heading to produce. Well, I see someone that's been visiting the church, and I stopped put the brakes on with my buggy, and I go in and I speak to her for a few moments in the cosmetic section. We, we, we compared our rouge. And after I spoke with her, then I was heading to the produce section. I went and figured out how many bananas I needed. I put them in my buggy. I went and I got in line at the self-checkout, and as I'm standing there, I look, and a couple that's been visiting or had just visited church last Sunday is walking in. I get out of line. I go over to speak to them, and I come up to them and say, hello, well, the woman is so treed on the orchids in my buggy, she didn't even see me. And jumps, I go, oh, hi. She, oh, I said, hello. I introduced myself again, and we talked for a while. A while, I go and get back in line. Well, something had happened between the garden section and the produce section, and before speaking to this couple, two women were walking I kind of passed them, and they made a comment about the orchids that were in my buggy. And so they kept talking, so I stopped, and I was talking to them. I talked to them about the orchids, talked about how to care for them. They are talking about how pretty they were and how they just loved them, and they'd love to get one sometime. And we talked for a while. And as I started to go off to go get those bananas, I stopped, and I said, 
If you don't have anywhere to go Easter Sunday, join us at Nashville Baptist Church for worship. And they said, oh, okay. Mom said, I ain't got nowhere to go. And I said, well, please come. I said, I'm Kenny Bird. I'm the pastor. Come worship with us. And then I went on and did all everything that I said and spoke. Got out of line, spoke to the couple. When I got back to the self-checkout, those two women were fighting with the cash register that would not work properly for them. I spoke to them, and in that moment, I said, don't move till I get back. I pushed my card as quickly as I could back to the garden section. There were two orchids left in the color that they had said they thought were so pretty. I picked up those two orchids. I put them in my cart. I went back. And they were just finishing up because they had to cancel the transaction. They had to go to another register. I pushed in there. I scanned those two orchids and I handed them to them. And they just beamed. And all this had to happen, as I told you, I had to stop here, I had to stop here for that timing to work out. And for in that moment, I know that it was God through the Holy Spirit saying, can he do this? And I handed them those orchids. And I said, please, join us Easter Sunday for worship at this time. The two sisters... They gave me their names. I don't know if they will come next Sunday or not, and that's not the important thing. The important thing was in that moment, God compelled me to show the love of Christ. Now, you don't have to spend, you don't have to buy something to show someone the love of Christ, but in that moment, that is what was appropriate. Figuring out where they were going to put it. And as I talked with them about, you know, it loves light. It doesn't have to have direct light, but, you know, you water it, half a cup of water, room temperature once a week, you do this. And we just talked for the longest time. And they went on. They hugged me right there in the middle of self-checkout lane at Walmart. So if anybody tells you there was a strange woman hugging the pastor, you'll know who it is. They went on, and I checked out. And I got to the door. And one of the greeters, Mary, y'all probably never imagined that I've gotten to know most of these people. As I came up to her, getting ready to show her my receipt, because I didn't have the orchids in a bag, she, she said, those two women told me what you did. They were so excited. Said that you told them how to take care of it, what to do, and this... And I was just kind of shocked because I wasn't expecting to hear anything back from that. And, and, and as I was leaving, she said, we appreciate you. And that was such a blessing in that I didn't do this for myself. I didn't do it to get recognition. I didn't think anybody was going to speak to me about it. Before I even got out of Walmart, I didn't think anybody would speak to me about it unless I saw the sisters again. I believe that, that this is at the heart of what God is calling us to do. To show his love whenever and wherever we can, in whatever way that we can, to impact this world for him. This is how we can connect to a world that is lost and broken, to a world that has a great deal of antagonistic thought toward the church. We've got to show them the love, the love of Jesus Christ. And I pray that, that we will do that. And that we will not tell Jesus to ride on by because of what he may expect of us. I pray that he will ride truly into our hearts today and, and we will respond. Please join me in prayer.
Dear Lord, help us to, to simply seek you and what you would have us to do and to be. Those same people that were cheering so loudly and passionately for Christ as he entered Jerusalem are the same ones that turned and yelled, crucify him. We can get caught up in these crowds as well. We can get caught up by the voices of the world. Help us to remember that we are called to tell the stories of Jesus. May they truly be written upon our hearts so that they will be shown throughout our lives. And may our witness be bold and never-ending for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn this morning is 129, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. I hope that that will be, be your, your desire this day, to have those stories fully within you to share with this world, and that your hearts may be changed as we stand and sing together. remember that the egg hunt will immediately follow the service. We look forward to all the children taking part in that and of course we invite you, the adults, to stay and watch and uh, join in the excitement. Remember all of the opportunities for worship this week and please join us next Sunday for the sunrise service for breakfast in the fellowship hall and discipleship time and our worship celebration. So please now receive these words as you prepare to, to go out and respond as indicated. Go gladly on your way as those who have recognized the Palm Sunday man as the key to the healing of the world. Hosanna, wonderful is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Translate your hosannas in language of daily living so that each task and each person may receive the best you can offer in those circumstances. Hosanna, wonderful is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The enduring love of God will encircle you. The amazing grace of Christ Jesus will cover you the sure friendship of the Spirit will inspire you, both today and evermore. Both today and evermore. Amen. <laughs>
Well, go ahead, that's fine. I forgot to...